Whatever the need is for those who have raised their hand, I ask for you to meet them. Reveal to them your love for them. Touch them. Inspire them. Speak words of, of, of wisdom to them. God, whatever the need is, we thank you for making yourself available to each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. to be with you today. It's been quite a week. You have anybody in here had quite? Oh, yeah. Woo, Pastor Mary, it's been quite a week. Jesus meets us in that place, doesn't he? He's so good. Bet you had to use your faith. Did you have to use your faith this week? Yeah, when you find yourself in those places, we go like, wow, it's been quite a week. That means that you've had to use your faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Did you have to use your faith? Amen. You know, Jen's, the passage that Jen read um, this morning, it kind of snugs into several other passages in my understanding. I'm going to share it with you. Let's paint things and put them into context just, just a tad. Just prior to Jesus having this dialogue with Peter about, um, you know, looking at the world through human eyes and his own interests and reprimanding Peter, Jesus, Peter reprimanding Jesus, which is interesting, isn't that? And then Jesus then turning and reprimanding Peter. But before all of that, what actually happened is that they're at Caesarea Philippi. And Caesarea Philippi is located not far from Mount Hermon, at the base of it. It's, it's, um, it's a, a, a small area of ruins. I saw it in 2012, small area of ruins. And at Caesarea Philippi, there's um, remnants of an old, several old temples. One of the temples is the Temple of Pan, the Greek god. Uh, it's a, got a big grotto that had its water there, and it is said that Mount Hermon flows in, and, of course, the, the Jordan River uh, comes down through that area through, um, from Mount Hermon. <clears throat> but there's this shrine and this grotto there that uh, was huge in Christ's day. And then next to it is... Uh, a, a very large Roman uh, temple that is um, there to honor Caesar Augustus and then later Philippi. So, you know, there is this, this whole uh, cultural mess right there. I mean, like, if you, if you took a few steps, you'd go from one to the other, and it's at the base of Mount Hermon. And we talked just a few weeks ago about what happened at the top, we believe, of, of Mount Hermon in the Transfiguration, right? So got the picture of the area. 
And just before this dialogue with um, Peter takes place, I want you to remember in Scripture, in the Gospel of Mark chapter 8, Jesus is, is asking the disciples, who do people say that I am? Who do people say that I am? And the disciples say, well, some say you are uh, John the baptizer. Some people say that you're Elijah. You know, they're really not sure. Maybe the prophet. Maybe you're, maybe you're a prophet. And Jesus says to the disciples, well, who do you say that I am? Can I tell you today that eventually we got to let go of all of the whatever anybody else says and we have to decide who Jesus is in our lives. Amen? We have to decide who he is. And so Jesus is there and he's saying to the disciples, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ, the Christos. You are the Messiah. You are the anointed one. And Jesus says, Wow, blessed are you, Simon Peter, because you didn't catch that in the natural, dude. You, that's a spiritual impartation. You got a word from the Spirit of God, and he made that available to you. Blessed are you. And he goes, and upon that revelation, upon that knowledge of eternal things coming into your realm, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And just so you know, there they stand in this Caesarea Philippi, this mess. Somebody say, it's a mess. Yeah. It's a mess. It's people, they just want to believe what they want to believe. They don't have any clue what's actually true anymore. They have traditions. They have ideas. They have desires. They have inclinations. They got all kinds of stuff going on there. And Jesus says, <clears throat> the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That temple of Pan was referred to as the gates of hell. Why? Because it was so heinous. They did child sacrifice there. They did, it was just a mess. It was a mess. And, and, and Jesus is like, what do, you, what do you say? What do you say? Who do you, who do you think that I am? Who am I to you? That was short-lived, wasn't it? Because then Peter listens to Jesus. And Jesus begins to say, you know what? Just want to let you know the Son of Man is going to start suffering. He's going to be rejected. He's going to be um, <clears throat> crucified. He's going to die. He's going to be buried. He's going to rise again on the third day. And Peter, the same one who got that revelation of the Spirit, says, no, no, that must never happen to you. That must never happen to you. And Jesus' response is, whoa, isn't it? You're looking at things from a human standpoint, Peter. And I'm talking about big things, eternal things, my friend. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Can I tell you that Satan's always going to try to steer our thoughts and, and drag us into the temporal realm. That's his domain. Of course he's going to want to do that. Of course he's going to want us to be selfish and self-centered and stick with the things we like. Oh my gosh, don't we just love exciting stuff that feeds our flesh. We want that. God says, if you will just seek the kingdom first, then everything that I have for you in the creation of the world, I have only good things for you. If you'll just seek the kingdom, I will give it all to you. But we don't want to do that because we're afraid that we'll miss out on things. And Peter's sitting there going like, oh my gosh, Lord, if you suffer and I'm following you, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to me? Jesus says, oh my, this is enough of your ability just to look in the natural. Let me help you see something really amazing, Peter. And the next thing that happens, and we did it 
We had Transfiguration Sunday, two Sundays ago on the liturgical calendar, but in the Gospel of Mark, the next thing that Peter tastes is being taken up with two others, Peter, James, and John, and they go up on Mount Hermon from this place in Caesarea Philippi, and they go up, and all of a sudden, Peter, James, and John get a vision of what Jesus was saying. <laughs> Amen? He's sitting there going like, okay, you, you need to get behind me because you have no clue what you're talking about. I'm all about eternal things and getting them into your hands. You care about the, the, the physical realm and only that. Let's, let me show you some things. Let me show you some things. Yep. You're going to have to pick up your cross, Peter, and James and John, and the rest of the disciples. You're going to have to pick it up, and you're going to have to lose that temporal life, the, the desire for selfish living. You're going to have to le- lose that and leave that behind if you're going to move forward with me towards eternal things in my will. In my will. They saw the glory of God. Amen? And they came back down that mountain differently. And I can tell you that you and I, when we finally get uh, just, we find ourselves at a crossroad and we have been asked by the Holy Spirit, who do you say that Jesus is? Who do you say that I am? I am. Who do you say? When we meet that crossroad, we have to decide if we're going to believe that he is the anointed one. And if he is the anointed one, what does that mean for our lives? I can tell you. I can tell you. It means change. It means change. Because he's the holy one. He is the anointed holy one. And to be holy is to be cut and set apart. To be holy is to be set aside for divine things. God is going to make us holy if we're willing to pick up our cross and follow him. If we're willing to lay down some selfishness and selfish behaviors, he will get divine love nature to us. Amen? Beautiful thing. Somebody say it's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. One of the things the Lord laid in my heart with regard to this passage were three words. I'm going to give them to you. Community, substance, guidance. Manager Foundation says that most Americans are looking for those three things. Community, substance, and guidance. Anybody in here need those things? Are they right? Community, substance, guidance. You need it? I'm going to tell you, you absolutely, all of you need it. All right? Community. That sense of belonging. Jesus says, I want to make you a child of God. I want to give you a sense of belonging to the Holy Father. I want to bring to you, and you will receive by faith, salvation that reconnects you with God, and we keep going and learn how to live. We have one Lord. Somebody say one Lord. One One faith. Somebody say one faith. faith. And one baptism. Somebody say one baptism. baptism. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through me. Now, that's a pretty bold statement, but quite frankly, he is God incarnate, so he doesn't have any trouble saying that. He said, no one comes to the Father except through me. You and I need Jesus. And in that relationship with Jesus Christ, we have an opportunity to be a part of the community, the kingdom, the family of God. It's a gift. He wants us to have that. But so many people try to live dancing around the outside of community and not really enter in. You know, outside of community, there's not a whole lot of teaching and things of that nature. There's just this good feeling. Well, it's really nice to belong. Well, even gangs belong to to each other. The community of God, the community of the kingdom that God wants us to have is a kingdom of believers who live by faith. Somebody say faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. And each one of us are going to have to learn how to live in that place. 
Now, I sit back some days and I go like, God, I keep hoping upon hope and upon hope for certain things to come to pass. Abraham had to wait a while. Did you know that? When God met with Abraham, God says, Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to, or Abram, he actually called him Abram at that time. Abram, Abram, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. And I know you're getting up there in age, dude, but I'm going to make you that father with Sarah. And at 100 years old, nothing's happened. Did it take some faith? Yeah, yeah. We read in Scripture, and especially in the book of Romans, we've been studying that on Wednesday night. If you haven't been coming on Wednesday night, you missed something. Very helpful. In the Gospel of Romans, we, the Apostle Paul tells us that um, it isn't our nationality that makes us children of God. It's the fact that we live by faith. We are children of God by faith. Somebody say faith. Faith is your community. It's, it's when you get around people who exercise faith and they put their faith in the one Lord, one faith, one baptism, they, that whole thing is a beautiful, powerful place. Now, why do you think that Satan tries so hard to keep people out of church? Community. It's where you realize you share so much with other people. It's, it's when you want to use your faith, those people around you start encouraging you and you, you can make it through the tough places in life because of that. It's why when we are going through hard times, even if we've been away from the faith for a while or we've been away from the community of God, we, we want to come back because we remember. Somebody say, remember. We remember. It's like a last It's just like, oh my gosh, I got to get back. I got to get back because my life is a mess. You and I need community. We need one another. Turn to your neighbor and say, I need you. We need one another. We need one another because we are be, to be filled vessels of love and grace. And our faith needs help. And God brings that faith to us. He says, to every person, a measure of faith is given. Well, that's true, but our faith has to grow. And actually what happens is our circumstances start happening and our faith has to keep up. And sometimes we just need other people. Amen? Sometimes we just need some people that understand. And sometimes we just need people who have been through some stuff and they can say, hang on, hang on, hang on. Abraham had to hang on. A lot of people had to hang on. If you look in Hebrews 11, it talks about it's like the hall of heroes of the faith. You sit there and you read it and you go like, oh my gosh, they had to hang on to faith. Why? That's God's true community. It's his true community. Second thing is substance. What do you think of when you think of the word substance? Substance. Substance. Faith is the substance can I tell you something that as the Spirit of God works in our hearts and we allow the baptism of that uh, spirit of holiness to happen in us, there is, that is the substance of heaven living and moving and having its being through people that are willing. There's no greater something. You do realize that heaven is what is real and this world is not. But we always think about it the other way. We sit back and go like, oh, everything's, I can touch this. I can't touch the eternal. God says, if you will just let that understanding go, I will show you eternal things. I will show you eternal things that can never be taken from you. I want to get those things into your hands. I want to get eternity into your heart and start, you start using some faith to bring it from heaven to earth. I want you to start doing it. And God says, it's called substance. It's substance. You and I need substance. Somebody say, I need substance. You, you, we are, our, our substance is, is the hope of what God is going to do, and it's built on the substance 
and promise of Jesus Christ who says he is the author and the finisher of our faith and he will never leave us. He'll never let us go. He is always going to be there for us. It doesn't matter what it looks like in the world and we're going through some stuff and whatever mess is out there. He says, if you will just stay focused on me, I will get you through this. And on the other side of it, you will have seen heavenly things and you will tell others and you will increase your community. Guidance. Somebody say guidance. People sit back and they go like, okay, so I need to spend time in the word of God. This is the logos, the written word of God. But there's also the rhema. Word of God. The Rhema. Somebody say Rhema. This is the spoken word of God. Jesus said, My Rhema, my words are life. They're life. And if you and I will spend time in the written word and putting that in, the Rhema word is revelation and is the very thing that brings guidance to our lives. It's the work of the Spirit. Somebody say it's the work of the Spirit. How many of you believe in the work of the Holy Spirit? All right. Okay. Good. Good. Good, good, good. It's really easy to, I've heard people say, oh, I just know the Spirit laid that on my heart and it has nothing to do with the Spirit, with the written word. And I kind of go like, oh, no, no, no. The Logos and the Rhema never contradict one another. Never. Never. But there is this beautiful thing. And Peter demonstrated it, didn't he? When Jesus said, Peter, oh my goodness, blessed are you. God opened the windows of heaven and put that in you. Somebody say Rhema. He put that in you and, and he revealed that to you. Blessed are you now that you've seen. You've seen it. And then he took him up and he let him see with his natural eyes. God has guidance for us. He wants us to be a people who are not ignorant of his ways and his will. But how that translates in each of our lives is going to be a little different. Somebody will sit back sometimes and go like, well, I'm reading it, but I really don't understand it. If you will just stop when you're reading and go like, Jesus, I did not get that. I'm going to read it again, and I'm going to keep reading it until I get a greater understanding. Holy Spirit, bring truth to my heart but we get tired of reading it the first time and goodness knows we may not press in for the third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth whatever and you're not using any faith and there is nothing that's going to be revealed to you with that attitude if it's hard it's okay it's okay because god is the God of all, all possibilities. And he says, if you'll just press in to seek me, I, I will, you, you will find me. You'll find me. And that rhema word to the heart is powerful. Can I tell you? I haven't had a lot of them, but I've had them. All right? How many in here have had the Spirit of God speak a word in due season to your life? None? All right. That's turned your life around. Do you see what community can do for you? Because if you haven't had that experience, there's people here with their hands up, and they have. And you, you can never be so proud and so arrogant to go like, well, if it hasn't happened to me, it just doesn't exist. Stop. What is the Spirit of God going to do? He's just going to say like, well, I guess they don't believe. I'm not going to show up for that one. The rhema word is power. It's, it's the power of God's word spoken and, it, and, it, and it's like it hits our natural being and all of a sudden we know that we have just had a visitation of something life, eternal life visiting. We've just had that. We've had it. God wants us to be people who are filled with substance, and seeking guidance all the time. 
There is at no time in my life that I've ever sat back and just went, God, I've just arrived, so I'm going to coast from here out. Thank you so much for salvation. Here we go. I'm just going to live the rest of my days knowing that I met you some years ago, invited you to my heart. We're done. It's ridiculous. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's ridiculous thinking. It's ridiculous thinking. He's the living Lord. And if you want to just make it about the written words, you can. And you still have some power there. But when you invite the spirit of holiness in, amen, and you ask for the Lord to make things real and, and apparent to you in your own individual life, what kind of God wouldn't love you that much? Is he going to deny you? The answer is no, he's never going to deny you. He's going to give you everything that you, he has set aside in the heavenlies for you. He's going to let it come down, and you're going to be filled with those good things. Those good things. I believe with all my heart that God is preparing his children for a, a new season, a new awareness of his presence with us, the power of community. Now, I don't know, I'm not going to pretend to know how that looks and how it's going to play out in our future, but I'm determined to be spending time in God's word, learning his heart, Inviting the Spirit of God to bring a rhyme, a word to my heart about it. And to live in the community of faith. And I don't just want any community. I want a faith-believing, faith-acting, faith-manifesting community. Somebody say amen to that. Because there are a lot of dead religions, aren't there? That was, that was, Jesus is in there. Who do people say that I am? And there's all this dead stuff surrounding him. Come on now. He goes, who do, who do people say that I am? He goes, who do you say that I am? You're the anointed one. The anointing is given to bring us in fellowship with God, in the power of God, to increase the kingdom of God, to increase and bring fruit in our lives. It is the power of God to bring change. Amen? It's the power of God to bring things from heaven to earth. Faith believing. Somebody say faith believing. I heard this week that uh, Billy Graham went home to be with the Lord, and I, the first thing in my mind was, wow, Lord, Mother always wanted to meet him. It was nice for you to take him home so she could. <laughs> Do you think... Heaven had a celebration when Billy Graham went home. I'm thinking it's still going. Yeah. Yeah, why? Because he taught about faith and the community of, of believers. Amen? And he welcomed people all the time into the community of believers. And he said, this is it. This is it. Come, 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 come. I'm telling you about it. He is the Lord of lords, the King of kings. You need to know him. He's living. He's not dead. He has abundance for us. Come into the kingdom and taste and see that he is good. I heard a cute story about Billy Graham. And in his early years, um, he went to this little tiny church in a Midwestern town. And he, um, when he got there, he had a letter to mail. And so he, he saw a young boy in the sidewalk and he said young man I want to mail this letter can you direct me in the right way to go to the post office and um, the young man told him how to get to the post office and Billy Graham says well I'm going to be um, having a service tonight at the Baptist Church and you might want to come on over there and I'll teach you how to get to heaven how to live for Jesus and the young boy says well, I don't think I'm going to be there because you don't even know how to get to the post office. <laughs> and I thought it was the cutest thing, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Can I tell you something? The anointing makes it possible for God to raise up his people, and, and we teach one another. We love one another. We live together in community. He, we have the substance uh, of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen and our faith is moving and it's active and we receive guidance from the Spirit of God and we move as a whole through life. 
if God's children would just lock arms with other of God's children and move spiritually, just keep moving, a lot would change. But we think about things in individual thing, in ideas, mindsets. Somebody say community, community. Substance, substance, and guidance. I need it. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day, and we thank you for your word, and we ask you, God, to give us a better understanding, give us a rhema word about community, God, because we need one another, and we need to be formed and fashioned on the rock of ages, you alone, one Lord, one faith, and one spirit, and one baptism into the spirit of holiness. Help us, God, to grab a hold of community. We need substance, God. We need that substance of things hoped for. We need you to bring substance to our lives. We need purpose and meaning. Rise us up into our individual giftedness. Help us to walk things out in the anointing of the Spirit and help us to gain a greater understanding every day of how you have formed and fashioned us to be people of purpose in this world. And help us, God, by guiding us guiding us through your written word, your spoken rhema word, and through the work of the Holy Spirit to bear witness when we've heard the truth. Help us to hang on, God. Help us to hang on because we know that you're coming for us. But in the meantime, we're going to live with purpose and in the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. So this is the second Sunday in Lent. And I, the Lord's laid on my heart many things. Just many, many things. So I have printed out um, a little piece of paper that has the plan of salvation on it and a prayer for salvation. And I want to know if you will keep this in your Bible or in your purses or in your pocket, your wallet. And when you are led by the Spirit of God to talk to somebody about faith, about community substance and guidance that God gives your life, if they respond by saying, wow, I've never heard that before, I'd like to know more about it, you just pull that out and you share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen? And so if you're willing to do that, I want you to hold it up, all right? I'll get the team theirs later, all right? Because they'll do, I know they'll do it. Hold it up. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for the way that your gospel works. It's the gospel of sharing in community. And so we ask for you to not only increase our community, but God, give us opportunities to share the faith, what we believe by faith. One Lord, one faith, one baptism into the spirit of holiness. Help us to share our faith, God, in you, the living Lord. Bring people into our lives so we can share. I pray for every person that is willing to be given an opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All righty. Okay, very good. So you all be blessed. Have a wonderful week. How did you do on your prayer? How many of you have been praying? Yeah, yeah. Praise God. Well, now, now let's go another journey. All right? Blessings for your day.